The life of the flesh is in the blood. So anything that stimulates blood movement stimulates life. We will gain insights from Barbara O'Neill, a renowned naturopath and health educator with a deep understanding of the body's natural processes and how to support them through holistic approaches. Today, Barbara will be discussing a topic that is fundamental to our overall health, blood and its critical role in the immune system. Plus, we'll reveal the number one food that stops your immune system from working. First, we must understand the role of blood and the immune system. Blood is essential for life, acting as the body's transportation system, delivering oxygen and nutrients to cells while removing waste products. Beyond these vital functions, blood plays a key role in our immune system, acting as the frontline defense against infections and diseases. Barbara will explain how blood works to protect us, detailing the roles of white blood cells, antibodies, and other components that are crucial in identifying and neutralizing pathogens. As a special bonus, we have added a section on how maintaining healthy blood through proper diet, hydration, and lifestyle choices can significantly boost our immune system's effectiveness. Whether you're interested in understanding more about how your body defends itself or looking for ways to strengthen your immune system naturally, Barbara's insights will provide you with the knowledge and tools to support your health through the power of your own blood. Let's learn from Barbara why blood is so essential. So why is the life of the flesh in the blood? The blood contains red blood cells and the red blood cells carry oxygen. The blood also carries nutrients, and these nutrients are break down from the food that we eat. The blood carries water. <clears throat> now at this point I want to have a look at the four vital elements needed for life, the four vitals. Number one vital element needed for life is oxygen. <clears throat> Number two vital element needed for life is water. Number three is sodium, and number four is potassium. So potassium and sodium are definitely supplied in the food we eat and the nutrients, but sodium particularly we take into our body, yes, in food, but also in added salt. And I think you'll agree with me, lentils and potatoes are inedible without salt, is that right? <laughs> Our palate tells us that we need salt. And potassium is really found in all your fresh fruits and vegetables. So you can see here the blood is the carrier of the vital elements needed for life. Barbara will now explain what else the blood does that makes it so essential. The blood does something else and the blood carries away waste. And any machinery always has something to fuel it and also has a waste. And this living machinery is no different. So no wonder the blood is called the life of the flesh. In addition to waste, Barbara tells us the blood carries something else. But the blood carries something else, and that is white blood cells. And the white blood cells are often seen as our immune system, is that right? Yeah. And we have five different types of white blood cells. We have neutrophils. And neutrophils, they make up approximately 60% of our white blood cells. So it's the neutrophils that are ones that are probably the most well known as, um, as white blood cells. Neutrophils, when they're given the message that there's an enemy, maybe there's a pathogen bacteria, they can actually merge out of the blood and go into the tissues and they envelope, they, they surround the pathogen or the bacteria and would you believe it, they release hydrogen peroxide. To kill, to kill that pathogen. And, and that's actually what pus is. 
it's dead white blood cells. <laughs> they basically give their life in, in killing off the enemy. L um, lymphocytes. Lymphocytes are another white blood cell. And lymphocytes make up about 25% of the white blood cells. And as the name implies, these lymphocytes are found in your lymph nodes. So this morning we looked at the lymphatic system which sweeps away waste from the tissues. It takes the waste into the lymph nodes. Nodes are in your neck, armpits, groin predominantly. And there's lymphocytes in there that can also deal with uh, any enemy that's, that's been swept into there. Lymphocytes are also like the, like the scouts. So they're roaming around and they have sensors on them. And these sensors pick up harmful pathogens and the, then, then they communicate with the neutrophils which basically go to that area to, to clean it up. Then there's monocytes. And monocytes make up approximately 10% of our white blood cells. And one of monocytes' roles is to clean up, basically clean up after the neutrophils and some of the lymphocytes have done their job. And the next is eosinophils. And eosinophils make up approximately 3% uh, of the white blood cell and basophils. And basophils, they make up the last 2% of the white blood cells. Barbara will now tell us about her experience with blood analysis. At Misty Mountain, when I was still working there, I used to do live blood analysis where we'd take a drop of blood, put it on, the, on a slide and put that under the microscope and it would come up on the television and a person could look at their blood and they'd see the red blood cells moving around and here and there um, you see the, the white blood cells. And if someone has got an infection, maybe they've got a bad cold, maybe they've got diarrhoea, then there will be a lot more white blood cells. And that's um, quite normal because when someone has an issue in their body, more white blood cells come along to, to fix the problem up. The importance of maintaining healthy blood is a cornerstone of a strong immune system. The quality of our blood directly impacts how effectively our body can transport oxygen, nutrients, and immune cells, which are all vital for fighting off infections and maintaining overall health. Hydration is another critical factor. Drinking adequate water is essential for maintaining the volume and viscosity of blood, ensuring that it can circulate effectively throughout the body. Proper hydration also helps in the removal of waste products and toxins from the blood, reducing the burden on the immune system. In terms of lifestyle choices, regular physical activity is very important. Exercise increases circulation, helping to keep blood flowing smoothly and ensuring that immune cells are distributed effectively throughout the body. Additionally, stress management techniques such as deep breathing, meditation, and adequate sleep, as chronic stress and poor sleep can negatively impact blood health and weaken the immune system. So what can we do to have healthy blood? Diet plays a crucial role in keeping blood healthy, particularly a diet rich in whole, unprocessed foods, including plenty of fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, and whole grains. These foods provide essential vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants that support blood health. For example, leafy greens like spinach and kale are rich in iron and folate, which are essential for producing healthy red blood cells. Citrus fruits, rich in vitamin C, can improve iron absorption and support the production of white blood cells, key players in the immune response. Therefore, a salad brimming with your favorite greens, nuts, and seeds, all whole, unprocessed ingredients, is an optimal meal to nourish your immune system and support healthy blood function. Whereas, the one food that stops your immune system from working properly is sugar. 
By following these principles, nourishing the body with the right foods, staying hydrated, and leading an active, balanced lifestyle, we can significantly boost our immune system's effectiveness and overall health. Remember, your health is the lock and we're here to provide the keys. Keep turning to Key Health for insights that unlock your full potential. The key to lifelong vitality is in your hands, it's just one bite away.